Austin Miller, the U.S. general leading the war in Afghanistan, stepped down yesterday in a symbolic end to the war. On Sunday Morning Futures, I spoke with former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo about what happens now in Afghanistan, as we understand that China is waiting in the wings to go in. Watch. The civilians are in charge, and, and President Trump had the same kind of resistance from the military as well to reducing our footprint in Afghanistan. It was ultimately his decision as the leader to, to begin this march towards having uh, our fewer, fewer troops there in Afghanistan. It's, it's all about how you execute it. Your point about the Chinese is well taken. Frankly, we provided security for the Chinese for 20 years. Today, there's fewer than 200 al-Qaeda there. That benefits the Chinese enormously. Their interests in Afghanistan are uh, commercial. They, they are, they are loath to commit their own troops, I expect. And so Afghanistan needs to begin to stand up on its own. Joining me right now is retired General, Fox News Senior Strategic Analyst, General Jack Keane. General, thanks very much for being here this morning. Uh, it's pretty incredible that we've been there for 20 years. Your thoughts now in terms of what happens next? Well, first of all, I don't think it's that incredible. Uh, we've been there for 20 years because we said in 9-11 we're in a multi-generational war. And we've, this is one generation has gone by, and we're still involved against radical Islam in four other countries, in, including Afghanistan, and that's Iraq, Syria, Yemen, and East Africa, all for the same reason, designed because those radical Islamic groups have intention to kill the American people. What's happening in Afghanistan now certainly is uh, becoming a worsening situation, and we should not be surprised at all. We pulled out our combat forces in 2014. The ground force became primarily and exclusively the Afghan security forces. But their support was very robust from the United States. Intelligence support to include a significant CIA presence and also U.S. air power. Both of those helped, helped the Afghan security forces significantly. Those, both of those areas have been, and resources have been pulled back from the Afghan security forces. It's not surprising that the Taliban now has some momentum. And I think we could be potentially seeing a very ugly situation uh, coming in the next few months in Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, I, for me personally, it's just extraordinary to see. It's been 20 years since 9-11. This year, we will actually be uh, looking at the 20th anniversary of that fateful day, uh, which we all experienced. And, of course, I was down there at the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I want to get your, your take on China's role here. Why is China waiting in the wings? Yeah, well, you got to recognize, and uh, the beneficiaries of the United States pulling out of Afghanistan is Iran to the west, Russia to the north, and China's on the border in the northeast that it shares with Afghanistan. And guess what's right across that border? is the Uyghurs. And that is why China has always had interest here. They, they don't want a resistance movement forming among the Uyghurs as it has formed in Afghanistan. The other thing is they have huge economic interest because the primary Belt and Road Initiative involves the China-Pakistan economic corridor and its highways, railways, and pipelines going from China through Pakistan. What China wants to do post-United States involvement in Afghanistan, whether it's a Kabul government or a Taliban government, they want to extend that initiative into Pakistan, into Afghanistan, because it's such a hub as a landlocked country there in South Asia. It's the center of it. And also, due to the United States surveys, geological surveys, it, it's rich in minerals, in, in uranium, in, in lithium, in copper and gold, and certainly China wants to get his hands on all of that. Wow. It's, you know, the threats are rising, I feel, so fast, General. I mean, here we are looking at the Middle East uh, once again uh, showing some serious, serious danger to Americans. You've got China rising, the Communist Party, uh, goals to overtake the U.S. as the number one superpower, Iran as well, Russia there getting stronger with 70-plus dollar-a-barrel oil. This morning, President Biden is expected to warn U.S. businesses about having operations in Hong Kong as Beijing continues to crack down on that city. What a difference Hong Kong is today than what we all know Hong Kong to be. One of the reported threats is the Chinese government's ability to gather data 
stored in Hong Kong, General. Your thoughts on what we're going to hear from Biden today on Hong Kong? I mean, it certainly took long enough, but apparently we're going to get a comment on Hong Kong and doing business there. I'd like to hear from the rest of the world the fact that China and the Communist Party was able to march in there and, and just start throwing people in jail, the freedom fighters like Jimmy Lai, and yet not a peep out of the G7 about this. Yeah, well, the, the good news is the first time that the G7 ever discussed China did occur this last, this last summit. So, ah. yeah, progress is a little slow, but it, it, it's good that that yeah. occurred. Yeah, but the fact yeah, is, a I challenge, mean, right. G, G, G could no longer stand the protests that were occurring <clears throat> in Hong Kong as they were began to gradually erode that democracy and the rule of law. And he had to crush it in his mind. And wh why is that? Because he's concerned about that movement. Given the notoriety that was achieving in the world, given the fact that the Chinese people do have limited access to the Internet, they were very much aware about that protest movement. He doesn't want that spreading to mainland China. That is his Achilles heel. His ability to have a social compact with his people and control them and dominate them while he get, lets them have whatever prosperity they can achieve in the country is, is what he wants to maintain. And that is why, he, he, in his mind, he had to crush Hong Kong. And it is a communist city state now. Let, let's face it. And, and we have to come to that reality and, and accept that. And I'm certain that's what has happened to the Biden administration. And some of their rhetoric on China has been very good, renewing alliances, certainly, that the, the Trump administration started with the Quad in Japan, Australia, India, and the United States, and trying to shore up Taiwan militarily, all movement in the right direction. But make no mistake about it, the Chinese... The Chinese regime is on the move in Western Pacific yeah. and also is reaching as far into Afghanistan uh, in the future if they can. It's not going to be easy yeah. because there's likely a civil war coming in Afghanistan and uh, taking that kind of initiative is unlikely if, if there is a civil war. Yeah. But, General, I mean, I don't really think American business gets it about the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, last week we heard the CEO of Nike say Nike is of China and for China. And then what about Charlie Munger? I mean, Berkshire Hathaway, does it get any more corporate Americana than Berkshire Hathaway? And yet, uh, Charlie Munger, uh, the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, says the communists did the right thing by silencing Jack Ma. 97-year-old uh, longtime friend of Warren Buffett uh, criticized uh, basically saying they did the right thing by, by quieting Alibaba's Jack Ma uh, in a recent interview. What the heck was that about as we watched the Cuban communist government crack down on activists yesterday, cutting off communication with the outside world, deploying security forces with rubber bullets and tear gas, arresting more than 100 people, uh, their, their locations unknown, General, uh, and yet business is perfectly fine operating in communist China. Yeah, well, that's going to stay a reality, Maria, as long as they can make the money there. And they believe that the risk is minimal in terms of China's dominating their, their particular industry. I, I know for a fact that a year ago, President Xi told his state-owned enterprises that, listen, your mission is not just to make money, but your mission is to defeat the foreign enterprises that are in this country. I mean, he, that's what he really wants. He wants that state-run capitalistic society of his under his control completely. And I think that is way off in the future. Uh, the fact is, the world yep. economy is intertwined with China. But what we can and should do, Maria, and, and he, make no mistake about yep. it, is we should deny, make certain that there are none, none of our companies are doing anything to assist China's military or its, or its intelligence capability. And certainly we've got the, what we've learned from COVID-19, we've got to begin the decoupling of our, our pharmaceutical dependence and other commodity dependence on China that have much to do with the, the, the health of the American people. Yeah, yeah, well, it's hard to differentiate there for some companies. Uh, is it military related? Is it not? Everything's military related. It's a communist country. Uh, it all follows the rule of the communists. General, it's great to see you. Thank you, sir. General Jack Keane.